Hey everyone, my mom just gave me some late Christmas presents she had forgotten to give me at Christmas time, including this wonderful mustache you see glued to my lip. She also gave me some magazines, including International Socialist Review! Woo! I know, right? Great. Uh, and me being a policy wonk and loving to debunk socialistic ideas, dove into this right away to see if I could find something to make a video about. Luckily, I found something pretty quickly. It's a editorial written by a guy named Phil Gasper, see if I can find it here, called The Crisis That Won't Go Away. And it's pretty much an argument I've heard before made by progressives and here socialists about how capitalism has a tendency to overproduce and then it causes a bust after a boom because there's a lack of demand and so people get laid off and it leads to a spiral. Now, if you understood the Austrian business cycle theory of economics, you wouldn't make this argument, but I don't think socialists really understand that. So I want to debunk this here because I just want this to go away, okay? This is going to be settled after this video. As you can see, this is just going to be a quick video through the eyesight. Not the usual quality, but at the end of this, I hope to have Phil Gasper gasping for breath after I ruthlessly tear him apart. All right, here we go. Here's a quote from his article. The underlying economic problems that led to the last downturn have not been solved, and Marx is suddenly making an encore appearance in the mainstream publications. Noriel Rubini, one of the few economists who predicted the last slump, told the Wall Street Journal in August, and Karl Marx had it right, Quote, at some point, capitalism can destroy itself. You cannot keep on shifting income from labor to capital without having an excess capacity and a lack of aggregate demand. That's what had happened. We thought that markets worked. They're not working. The individual can be rational. The firm to survive and thrive can push labor costs more and more down, but labor costs are someone else's income and consumption. That's why it's a self-destructive process. Okay, so the explanation he's making here is one I've heard for why the uh, Great Depression took place. And the idea is that during the Roaring Twenties, big business was like, okay, we're going to produce more, you got to consume more, produce more, consume more, produce more, consume more, blah, blah, blah. But because wages were staying stagnant for the regular people, as opposed to the people who are getting rich off stocks, probably the top 1%, you know, there wasn't the demand to sop up that excess supply. And so what happened was that, you know, eventually... Corporations had to lay off workers to stop producing this excess supply, and then the loss of those workers' incomes took away from total aggregate demand, and so it led to a vicious cycle where more jobs were lost and aggregate demand went down and the economy shut down. The whole problem with this theory is that supply is a very direct relationship with demand. It's a response to demand, and so it would be very unlikely for this level of overproduction to happen without the demand to soak up the production. Think about it this way. If a business overproduced, or even if a bunch of businesses overproduced, they would very quickly see that they weren't selling these products, and so they would stop because they were suffering losses. And the unemployment by that would be minimal. It wouldn't be large. It would be a very small thing, and they would readjust. It would be a self-correcting system. The only reason we would have gotten to this level of over overproduction is if there was a false demand, you know, it was acting like there was a demand for the product when in fact it was a demand that was, for example, a expansion of the money supply, which only goes on as long as the money supply is expanded. By the way, that's actually what happened. The Federal Reserve expanded the money supply and lowered the stock ratios so that it, in, it, it in, in essence made it easier to buy stocks as well as flooding the market with money, which always causes this kind of boom and bust cycle. So the whole problem here is that he doesn't see the relationship between supply and demand. Now the second part of this argument here is the individual can be rational, the firm to survive and thrive can push labor costs more and more down, but labor costs are someone else's income and consumption. That's why it's a self-destructive process. Now Annie Leonard, who's an enviromarxist and believes the government should come in and you know, completely plan our economy, even admits before there was all this government intervention in the market on behalf of the worker, on behalf of the poor man on behalf of corporations, on behalf of anyone, that there was something called Fordism, and it was named after Henry Ford. And what happened was Ford adopted a policy. This is back when the minimum wage had been completely you know, destroyed by inflation, so it was completely ineffective. And what happened was Ford doubled his workers' salaries and cut down their working hours. He had lower worker turnover, and higher sales as his own workers join the consumer base. That's free market capitalism at work right there. It was in Henry Ford's best interest 
to make his workers better off, to make higher profits for himself. That's the kind of capitalism we need. We need that kind of capitalism rather than where the government comes in and messes up with subsidies and regulations that you can have a advantage by breaking. Now, this is from an enviro-Marxist. And, you know, actually Annie Leonard dislikes this because she says it laid the base for our consumer economy, which is destroying the planet. But she admits, and other companies follow it, she says that herself. This is from a left-wing enviro-Marxist. This is the kind of capitalism that works. Unlike socialism, where the government tries to put price controls and wage controls, it just causes shortages and surpluses of things that people don't need. It's, it just doesn't work. And this is why it do, people who don't understand the way the market works and the Austrian business cycle, they make these kinds of fallacies. They don't understand, they don't understand the way that government action actually incentivizes these bad things, even though the intentions are good. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. It was quick. It was not very high tech, but free market rocks, government intervention knocks into price system barriers, making the situation hairier. Sorry, Phil Gasper.